Welcome to Bakersfield College Industrial Automation and you can actually get a little bit of a view of our automation lab here. So this is a part two video of setting up projects with Studio 5000 and using the Control Logix PLC. I'm going to be using Studio 5000 and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I open up a new project and I don't know if you can see it. Let me move this camera. So here I have some trainers, some PLC trainers. So I'm going to connect to that top PLC and do my work on that. Now I've got a new project open and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go online with my PLC. So I'll go to Communications, Who Active, and I'll use Ethernet IP. And this shows all the PLCs in our lab, and my most of them are turned off, so it shows X's. My PLC is number 46. So this shows the communication card. I'll expand that and show the back plane, expand that. Click on the controller, which is this Model 71 controller, and go online. And it takes a, a few seconds to get online. It asks me to download my program, so I'll download that into the controller. The program is finished downloading and I'll go into run mode and I can see I'm good here because I get all green indications. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I don't have any any modules configured in my new program. You can see down here I have my controller and that's the only thing it knows about. If I open up my controller tags you can see there's nothing in there. So I'm going to right click on configuration, discover modules, and I'm going to create this first one. These are my inputs. Okay, it's configured that module and you can see now I have some addresses. These are my all the addresses for that module. Now I'll just do one more. These are my outputs. Now I have my first two modules configured and I have all my addresses. These are my inputs, and these are my outputs. So these all exist in my controller tags. You can see under my under tasks and my main task, I only have one task. Here's my main program and I'll expand that. I've got a main routine and here I have parameters and local tags. So in local tags I have no tags no addresses. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create some alias tags because if I look at my tags here, my base tags, they're not convenient to use because I, I don't know what local I, local one, I, one, it doesn't mean anything to me. So I'm going to go here to edit tags here I'm going to start making an alias tag. I'll call it start. And that's going to be an alias for one of my outputs. So here under alias, I'm going to click this drop down. I'm going to find my output module, which is my second slot. So local to output, I'll expand that. And under data, I'm going to 
expand that and I'm going to use zero. Creating that alias tag and linking it to a physical output address automatically updated this to a boolean. Now I'm going to give it a description. Start the machine. Okay, so there's my start alias. I'm going to do one more called stop. No, I'm going to do one called running. And I'll link that to an input, so local one I for input. And I want to use the data, and I'll use location zero. So now I have two tags. One is start and one is running. Those are both in my controller scope tags. So if I go down here to my main program, my tags here, I don't have any tags. Nothing is showing. But I can go to edit tags and I'll make one more. I'll call it fault. And that's an alias for another input. So local one input and I'll take data one. Again, that updated to a Boolean. And this is in my program. I've made two or three alias tags. Two of them are up here in my controller tags, start and running. And one I put down in this main program, my fault tag. So if I, I'm going to create a new program. I'm going to add a new program. I'll call it uh, second program. And in that program, I'm going to add, and in that second program, I've got parameters and tags here. So notice here the notice here the fault tag is not showing up. Now I'm going to create a routine in this new program. So right click, add new routine, and I'm going to make that ladder logic. I'll just call it new. When I go in there, if I want to add an input and I go to assign that input I've got my local addresses all my base tags and notice I have running and start are both available to me because they're up in the controller tags but that fault tag I made it's not available here so let me just close that I'll go to my main routine and I'm going to put an input there and I'll go to assign it again I've got all my all my base tags I've got my running and start which are in the controller scope but I've also got this fault tag that's available to me now so that fault tag I made it in main routine I made it in main program it's available to this routine, but it's not available to this routine. So I could go in the second program and go to edit tags and I can make one here called fault. And that's an alias for, I'll say local in two. Notice zero and one are not available to me because they're already taken. So I'm going to use two. And now, it's not showing up yet. And now, I have fault available to me, but it's not the same fault as in the other program. So it might get confusing if you do it that way, but it's possible to use the same tag name if they're in different program scopes. If they're in the controller scope, then you can't use the same name over because it would not know which one you're referencing. Different ways to set up addressing 
and when we start programming we're only going to use the main program and we're going to use a main routine and eventually we're going to add some more routines under the main program but it's going to be a little while until we get into using more programs and different tasks so when we start we're going to use our main task main program and main routine so that's the guy we're going to work in we're going to put all our tags under controller tags and down here we're going to work with configuration a lot of this in the middle we don't need to worry about right now okay thanks for watching